Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video actually comes from one of our uh, good people that likes to watch our other videos and asked quite a while back whether or not we could show how to do some more advanced slot work. Uh, his name was Randy, and it took us a while to get to it because uh, what he was looking at was in the basic stuff, and this is more of an advanced thing. So I'm going to show you how to do some slots, and I'm going to start out with an angled slot. So if you look here in the program mode and I swipe forward, you're going to see that in that block I've got an angled slot. And the problem with programming this, of course, is that I don't necessarily know where these four tangency points are in order to program it. Now I'm working in the RMX, which means that I have the ability to let the AGE do all the hard work for me, but I am going to show you also how to find those points with math help in case you're running a machine that doesn't have AGE programming. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the edit mode and I'm gonna erase my program like so, and then I'm gonna start at the very beginning. So I'm gonna to go to program here, I'm gonna skip naming it, and just move forward. Now I'm gonna do this as a pocket, but most likely you could probably do it as a profile too. Uh, it really doesn't matter if my cutter is big enough, it's just gonna go around the outside anyway. So I'm gonna to go to a regular pocket because that gives me AGE programming. And then from where my part starts, I'm gonna start actually up in the upper right hand corner of the slot. And, uh, and the trick to this really is to just have a starting point on the arc. Since I don't know where it begins or ends, I gotta take a point that's straight off a tangency at say three o'clock or 12 o'clock to get myself started. So I'm gonna start at three o'clock and I'm gonna go counterclockwise. So that would make this dimension 2.75 and the Y dimension is minus 0.75. Okay, my Z rapid is not really important here. I'm just gonna use 50 thousandths. I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch deep and I'm gonna set my depth of cut. That's fine right there. Um, my finished cut, I'm gonna make that 10 thousandths. And then my RPM, I'll put it at 3,500. Bring it in at 10 inches a minute, run it at 20. Use tool number one for the whole thing. That gives me a starting point. And now I'm just going to use the AGE to help me, right? So I'm gonna start out, this first part is going to be an arc. It is counterclockwise in direction. I can either use the drop down or I can simply push two to switch that to counterclockwise. And my X and Y end are what I'm missing. So I'm gonna use the guess feature here and say, well, I know it's somewhere over there. Touch the screen and enter the guess. And then the center of the arc is what I actually do know. It's 2.25 and minus 0.75. Okay, the other thing I know is that the radius is a half an inch. This is the upper small radius, and that's all I got. So you can see I've got a starting point here, and I'm just going to simply swipe forward. And now it's asking me, what do I want to do next? Well, I've got a milling event, and it is tangent to the arc. So I'm going to say yes to that. And then again, I don't know where it ends. Now over here, I'm going to help myself by moving the screen a little bit. And I'm going to say, I'm going to guess that it's somewhere down there, and enter that guess as well. Now the rest of the questions that are here for me on the line, I don't know any of the answers. So I'm simply gonna swipe forward and go to the next piece, which is the bottom arc. On the bottom arc, I'm gonna tell it that that's tangent to the line. Whoops, I missed. Sometimes it's the angle I'm sitting at here. This is also counterclockwise, so two again. And I know that my ending point is somewhere around there. Okay, um, what else do I know? I know the center point. So the center point is 0.75 and minus 1.75. And again, the Conrad doesn't exist, but the radius in this case is 0.5 again. All right, and you see it's starting to draw it already. So I swipe forward here, and I've got two more pieces. I've got another milling event. It is tangent to the previous arc. Again, I don't know where it ends, but it's somewhere around there. Remember, there's another piece of an arc still left over. I don't have anything there that I can tell it, so I do my last arc, which is tangent to the line. It's counterclockwise. And then my X ending point is going to be where I begin, right? So that's, that's uh, 2.75, sorry about that, and minus 750. The X center is 2.25 and minus 750. And at that point, you'll see that everything is correct. Okay, now in the machine, I've already got my zero set up, I got my tool set up and everything else. So the only thing I really have to do is swipe forward and say end AGE, which completes the process for the slot. I'm gonna to go to my tool table and I'm gonna tell it about this tool and I've got the tool set up right here already, right? So I'm just gonna come in here and say, this is gonna to be tool number one. Okay, that sets my tool correctly, 
right? And now I'm ready to make that slot, all right? Now, before I do that, I do wanna show you a couple things, right? If I go to the tool path, you're gonna see that actually what I've got is just a lead in and then two passes around, one to rough it and one to do the finish. And a lot of times with a slot, you may not even need the finish cut, but this will give you an idea on how it's going to do so. All right, so everything looks good here. I'm gonna to go to the run mode, push start. Let it process real quickly. I'm gonna push go. It's gonna move over to zero, zero. It tells me to turn the spindle on. Okay, I'm gonna to go to tracking like I generally do and just make sure I didn't screw up and look bad in front of you folks. Okay, looks like it's in the right place. So stop, CNC run and go. And there you have it. So that's how I would do the straight slot. Now that's actually one of the things that people were asking for, but Randy actually wanted to see how do you do a, a slot that's on an arc, right? Especially if it's a partial arc. It's easy to figure out what your tangency points are if you've got 90 degrees or 180 degrees of arc, but if you've got something less than that, it's a little harder. So I'm gonna use the same numbers in here, but I'm gonna put a three inch arc between the two smaller half inch arcs, okay? Now before I do that, I gotta actually flip the part around so you can see it when I get to the machining part, so bear with me one second. Okay, am I still in the right place, Bill? Awesome, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to my program and I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, right? So I'm gonna just go backwards to where I started this process. I'm gonna use the same starting point, so I'm just gonna delete the events that made the rest of the part. Okay, so I got my starting point right here. It's kind of the same process, so I'm just gonna explain it like this. I'm gonna start out um, with my irregular pocket here right and i'm going to do my first arc kind of like i did the first time it's counterclockwise i don't know the ending points so i'm going to say somewhere around there right i do know the center points 2.25 minus 0.75 and the radius is 0.5 okay so i got my dotted line saying okay i got an idea where we're starting here and here's where it differs i'm going to do an arc again this arc is tangent to the first arc it is counterclockwise, so two for counterclockwise. My X and Y end, again, I'm gonna just move the screen to help myself. And I'm gonna say, I don't know where that is, but I know it's somewhere down here. Hit enter. And you'll notice it puts a circle out here because it doesn't know where the middle can be. So in this case, I can actually guess at the middle to help myself. So I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna guess that the center's over here. It's gonna kind of bring it into the right general area now, right? And what is the other thing I need to tell it? Well, I need to tell it that that's a three inch radius between the two small arcs. So in this case, I've got that. I swipe forward and I do the next small arc. Everything's tangent to one another. So I turn on the tangent button, tell it it's counterclockwise. I don't know where my X ends, so I'm just gonna touch the screen over here, push enter. And then I'm going to tell it where the center of that arc is, which is uh, 0.75 and minus 1.75, and that radius is 0.5. So you see it's starting to try to figure it all out here. It doesn't have enough information yet. I'm gonna swipe forward again, do the next big arc. It's counterclockwise, uh, or I'm sorry, it's clockwise this time. Okay, I don't know where it ends, so I guess somewhere around there. 
enter my guess. Same problem with not knowing where to put the center. So I'm going to come over here and say guess about there. Kind of starts to bring it into play. Tell it it's a three inch radius. Then I got one more piece, right? So I got one final arc. It's tangent to the other arc. It is counterclockwise again. My X ends at 2.75. My Y ends at minus 0.750. And my Y and X center, 2.25 minus 0.75. And last but not least, this is a half inch radius. And you'll see from there that it straightened it all out. Now, one thing I forgot to show you on the first part, um, just thought about it right now would be, for those of you guys who are running this in a different control than the RX or an SX that has AGE programming, you could still do this in an EMX or, or anything like that too. You just need to use math help. So before I get out of here and run this, I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So anytime that I'm trying to figure something out like this, you gotta understand that what AGE does is it basically does a math help for you. And so you fill in the blanks and tell it what you know, and as you move through it, it looks at the information and solves the problem for you. If I was to solve this problem, I would go to math help, and in here, what I'm looking for is under D where it says line arc tangencies. I'm gonna to go to D here, and in this particular case, it's asking me to find the center and the intersecting points of an arc that's tangent to two others. So I'm gonna select 19, and you'll see there's three circles there, and it says, what can you tell me? Okay, well, the first one, the center is 2.25, and minus 0.75, and that is a radius of a half an inch. The second one is 0.75 minus 1.75, and it's also a half an inch. And then the radius in between them is three inches. And you'll see that it calculated, but it doesn't look like my part, does it? That's because there's actually eight different combinations that would work for this. The great beauty of AGE is that you give it information like what direction your arcs and things are, so that it actually fills in which one of the eight solutions you want to have. But as you'll notice when I go through the solutions here, eventually you're going to see there's one of my solutions. That's the bottom half of my arc coming off the small arc, big arc, small arc. And if I go through a little bit more, there's the other solution, which will be the bigger side of the arc going from the small arc to the big arc and back out. Okay. As long as we're in here explaining all this, I'm going to take a step backwards. And I'm going to show you that in the same math help section, type 16 says find a line tangent to two arcs, right? So I go to 16, and as you can tell here with the same information, 2.25 and minus 0.75 and a half inch radius, and the other one is 0.75 minus 1.75 and a half inch radius. And in this case, there's only two solutions the top line and the bottom line. So that shows you exactly how I got to uh, figure out what the dimensions are. So if I was using this in a control without AGE, I just have to either write down the answers and put them in my program, or if I'm already in my program, you'll notice that there's data keys down here which will allow me to take the answer and put it in the end or the beginning or the center of my program as I go. So that all depends on which model of the controls you have. Of course, they've made the RX so easy with the touch screen that you don't need any of those features. But I think it always helps to know how math help works because if you know how it works, you kind of know what to tell it and what you can leave out. Okay, so I'm gonna close the math help window. And here I am with my part. I gotta go back to my tool table just to make sure everything looks good and it does, right? I'm gonna go over to setup mode and I'm gonna look at the tool path. Everything in here, you can see that once it ramps in, it's gonna go around the same way as I did before. And push return. All I did was flip my part around so I could use the same corner for the other part. So I'm gonna to go to run mode. I'm gonna to go to start. Let it calculate, right, push go. And then once again, it's telling me turn on the spindle. Right, I know it's right this time, so I'm just gonna let it run.
And there you have it. So let me grab that part real quick. All right, so as you can tell here from the part, you can see both arcs, uh, or both slots, I'm sorry, here's the arc slot and here is the angled slot. Okay, now I use a three quarter inch end mill and the slot's basically an inch wide, so it covered its tracks really well. So I used a pocket mainly so that it would ramp into it the material, whereas if I would have done it just as a profile, it would have plunged straight in and then cut the part. It would have been a little quicker, but this way I get a little bit more relief and it's easier on the machine to do it so. Okay, so as you can kind of tell from that, it's pretty simple if you're using AGE to figure anything like this out. Sometimes your print might show the angle or how many degrees your arc has, something like that. All those questions are in AGE. Just take the ones that you need. But when it comes to tangency points in reality, it's pretty simple. You need centers of arcs and you need radius of arcs and it'll figure out anything. So hopefully this has been beneficial to you guys. Randy, thanks for the suggestion. Sorry it took so long. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, keep on tracking.